I'm here with Susan Red and Lambert from uh, Law Vision in the US. And Susan, we've been delighted to have you here for a couple of days conducting the Legal Project Management Certification Workshop. Um, and I wanted to, for those folks that couldn't be at the workshop, I, I wanted to kind of go through a little bit about legal project management. Um, because you know you're one of the gurus, and uh, and really give them a feel for what it's all about. So let's kick it off with the question that we should always start with: it was, what is legal project management? Well, thanks, Terry. Um, so legal project management really is simply a process for how, at the outset of a matter, we define the parameters of the matter, then plan the matter then manage the matter to hopefully to the plan and changes that occur with the plan and then at the end of a matter evaluate how the matter's gone. Uh, and one of the things that we see is every every lawyer that's successful has been doing some aspects of legal project management. So it's not something that is completely new and foreign and, and it's certainly not rocket science, uh, at least the way we think about it. It's really a lot about changing the way we communicate with clients and with our internal teams and so a new way of relationship management. And it's also really just a more proactive way of doing what many lawyers already do. And as the, the clock organization, the Corporate Legal Operations Consortium says, it's really what lawyers already do, but with more systematic approaches and in the language of business that the clients are used to using. If you're a litigator or someone that works with you know, transactional matters, is it as relevant to, to both, to everybody, or, or, or more to one than the other? Yeah, it's really, it's, it's applicable to every area of practice. At least in the U.S., it got started initially, or there was more receptivity of for the litigation practices for a couple different reasons. There started to be more pressure post-GFC on the, the, just the cost of litigation, and with e-billing uh, being so prevalent there, it made it something where litigators were already used to having use of task codes and work being broken down, phases and tasks to be used with the task codes, that there was already a little bit of a mindset about that kind of approach to the matters. And so um, it was kind of ironic to me because I was a litigator early in my career, and uh, litigators used to say things like, well, you can't possibly do litigation on a fixed fee or a cap because there's so many unknowns, but they were forced into that, you know, really about a decade before many transactional lawyers were. And now, in recent years, it started to be where the transactional lawyers would say, oh, it's easy to predict litigation. It's just much harder in this M&A work that I do. Um, but in reality, the simple concepts of LPM, of planning out a matter and managing to that matter, to that plan, apply to all types of practices. So we're seeing it very common in intellectual property practices and, and construction, real estate, you know, tax, litigation, commercial, all aspects. So you, you mentioned, when you were defining it, you mentioned effectively four distinct components or elements to it, which, which I might get you to repeat again, but, but a follow-up to that. Of all of those elements, have you noticed or do you hear from the people that you work with that any one in particular is harder uh, in the legal industry for folks to, to grapple with than others? Mm -hmm. Well, probably the hardest is dealing with scope changes and having conversations with clients when things change. Um, but really, getting lawyers just initially to think about at the outset of a matter, having more of a conversation up front with the client and defining, you know, what, doing what we call a scope of work document, defining those parameters, getting clear on what's in and what's out of scope, and making sure that that's agreed to with the client. Uh, if that's done, then it makes it much easier to have those scope change conversations later. And it's hard for a couple reasons. One, because lawyers historically have been used to being very reactive to what clients do rather than more proactive and planning ahead. And it's, it can be hard because lawyers often, as soon as they're engaged, want to jump in to start doing the work and uh, not spend a lot of time on upfront planning. And even though it doesn't have to take a lot of time to do a scope of work document, it's something that many people have historically resisted because they want to just kind of jump in and do the work. And lawyers historically have kind of done the next step and the next step and so on instead of planning it out a bit farther in advance. Thank you for that. Uh, you mentioned earlier, you touched on fixed fees, and I guess sometimes people associate legal project management almost exclusively with fixed mm -hmm. fee work. But, but is that true, or does it kind of run the gamut of all types of different fee option arrangements? It really applies to all types of fees, and we're actually seeing one of the big challenges in law firms today is not so much, I mean, when it's a fixed fee matter, people know that that has to be managed differently and there's certain constraints. 
And so those matters in many firms are not the ones that are most problematic in terms of write-offs or blowouts, uh, but rather the situations occurred where virtually every time today a partner is asked for a budget, an estimate, uh, we find even if the client says, I won't hold you to it, that matter has essentially now be become capped. And what happened is many lawyers didn't understand that this was a cap, and they were managing the work assuming that as long as they did everything appropriate and it was necessary for the matter, that the client would pay even if it went over the number that they'd given the client. But in many instances, that number has now been put into a budget, whether of a business unit of the company or the finance team has that number, and it sometimes can't be changed. And so lawyers not recognizing that they were managing to a cap has caused literally millions of dollars of write-offs in you know, medium to large firms. And so the, the, the impetus in many cases for legal project management has been to manage to, to deal with those caps so that we don't have a write-off uh, by going over that cap and so we can manage the work and maybe even come in under the cap but certainly not have the, the losses that firms have had with the significant write-offs. In, in the last short while, there's been... Um, an evolution of technology available to support legal project management. Mm -hmm. um, do you see that being used more and more by legal project managers and others working in that space? And, and would you say it's assisting their work, you know, supporting them and being able to do the things that they do well and better? Mm -hmm. Well, technology can be an enabler, but where some firms have gotten into trouble is really thinking that an LPM tool, a technology tool, would be the magic bullet and that that would enable them to avoid having to kind of change their behaviors otherwise and do things differently. I think it was best expressed by one of our panelists at the program today where they said, you know, people think, um, you know, and I started the program talking about people, process, and technology as being three core elements of LPM, uh, but some people have thought of it being technology and then the process and people when in fact it's really the reverse. It's really first about people. And again, about communication, managing expectations, getting our teams to work better and not have duplication of work and so on. And then simple processes that legal project management is really all about. They're not, as I said, not rocket science, but just simple frameworks and ways of thinking about how we organize the work and how we communicate more clearly with clients. And then the technology can come along really after that. But we've seen firms where they tried to buy a tool first it often backfired for them. But we're now at a place where the technology tools that are out there are much better than they've been in the past. And once you start to get some kind of momentum for LPM inside an organization, you often start to find the lawyers asking for, now how can we do this quicker with a tool or how can we mine the data that we have? Uh, but many firms started actually with just Excel spreadsheets with maybe a SharePoint overlay and they've been able to do some great pricing and management of matters with that. Uh, it's not until really, really when they start wanting a lot more data mined, a lot more analysis of different matters and so on, that they, that they really start to see the benefit of having a, a more comprehensive tool. With, with the evolution, I guess, of, of legal project management, um, it, it often goes hand in hand, and, and it seems that it has here as well, with an evolution of a specialism within that as well. So do, do legal project managers, the folks that have that title or do that work, who may not have that title, do they come from a common background or where, where, do, where do the folks that do this work tend to come from? Mm -hmm. Well, it's really a mixed bag so far in terms of um, a, a high percentage of people in these roles are former practicing lawyers. Um, you find another percentage that are project managers by background coming from either IT backgrounds or project management in other industry. Um, a background that's fit very well into this field is project managers from, say, the big four consultancies or other organizations like that, where they're professional service firms and they're used to doing project management in that setting as compared to, say, a more structured, you know, a, a, techno a, a PM on a technology implementation is a very different kind of role than an LPM in a law firm trying to really kind of coach and support the matter team doing the work. Um, but we're starting to see, and, and there's been a lot of conversation around the leaders of LPM teams in the UK and the US and, and here where you know, they've been, there's now been enough um, time of firms doing this. They're starting to really look at more than any particular background. It's really a lot about the right personality traits. Um, someone who has you know, hopefully a little higher resilience and uh, sociability than some of the data shows on kind of a typical lawyer. Someone who's got good influence skills. And, of course, excellent communication and interpersonal skills. And, and I call it, too, kind of having a servant leader mindset. 
in the work that you do in the US and, and really that you do globally, are you seeing more legal project manager roles increasing? So are they on the rise, generally speaking, or and where are they showing up? Are they showing up in law firms, legal departments? Where where are you seeing those trends? Yeah, they're 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 booming. In fact, in the UK and the US, they just you can't find enough people for these roles right now. Mm-hmm. And actually, some of the people at the end of this program were just saying to me that the same thing's starting to happen in Australia. That there's just you know. Who, you know, team members will get poached from one firm to another, and they're just as kind of a dearth of enough people that have the the right background and then the right personality traits to fit that. So they're just there's really almost a, a desperation for these roles. Uh, the UK that's been going on for probably three or four years, and the, in the US it's been the last maybe year to two years. Um, there are several major firms in the US that have unfilled positions right now that they've been trying to fill for a year or more. Um, particularly their heads of LPM, and then for the teams, the firms that have large teams, for their kind of manager or director levels in these roles. And so some firms are trying to skill them up by, you know, taking former practicing lawyers. There's one leading global firm where they will post internally positions to their associate ranks and other staff attorneys and other roles at, when they have a position open, and they're getting people moving, you know, into those roles. Um, so yeah, there's, it's definitely a growing field and going to be a lot of job opportunities in it because some firms have up to 40 people in these roles now, but a, a number of other firms have you know, two or three people perhaps, but they will eventually build a team of team or 10 or 20. So as, as these roles evolve, as the positions evolve as well, and looking to the future, reflecting I guess on the things that we've been discussing, what, where do you see legal project management um, as an area of work, and I guess the role of legal project manager evolving in the future, say in the next three to five years? Well, I, I, the, right now, some of the firms have very small LPM teams, and so the team ends up playing roles that really fall into a number of different categories. Often there's a job posting for a position that is essentially really four or five people's jobs. They'll be a part of it, which is to come in and kind of lead an LPM initiative and kind of really it's about change management. There'll be a part of the role that's about either developing a, a, a pricing or LPM tool or, or uh, purchasing and implementing one of the publicly available tools. There'll be another part of the role that's really about doing some internal training and educating of the, the fee earners. And then there'll be another part of the role that really is kind of the predominant pure legal project manager role, which is what I call kind of an internal consultant. Um, in some companies, you'll be a PM where you only work on one project at a time. But in law firms, they're often working with a large number of different matters. They'll, they'll sometimes have a portfolio of matters in firms that have large teams. But they're almost like an internal consultant where they'll advise a matter team at the outset of a matter to help them develop the stakeholder analysis and scope of work document. Then they may periodically in the matter monitor what's going on in the matter. Um, so they can handle quite a number of matters if they're kicking them off and then just doing maybe a monthly monitoring check-in um, versus some PM roles will be embedded on very large clients. Uh, I gave the example to the group earlier today of one firm in New, York, in New York that had a PM for about a $20 million client of the law firm that had a large portfolio of matters, and they were that was their full-time job just to manage those. And so I think we're going to evolve to where that job where we have an LPM team expected to have so many of these different roles as maybe more of the change management is overcome and firms are buying in and this is a very accepted common role in firms. We'll be able to have more people focusing uh, in really uh, uh, almost purely on that role as a legal project manager and helping these matters be run more effectively. And then there's kind of a new area that's developed for these LPM teams of actually working with the clients directly, whether it's to be the LPM that's inter- interfacing in client meetings and directly in the client meetings with the relationship partner and the LPM um, as part of kind of the legal ops team on the law firm side, interacting with the client team. And also a large number of firms that have been leaders in this, they've actually set up separate consultancies where they, um, their LPM is, team is being asked to come in and actually do advisory work. Um, consulting work that's sometimes related to the legal work and sometimes really a separate uh, a separate service that the law firm's offering. So I think we're going to see that whole evolution. And again, some firms building large teams. A couple of firms in the U.S. have a separate uh, full consulting team that are consulting to legal departments on these issues because there are lots of consultants out in the business world for project management, but not that many that know how it's been applied in a law firm that can then go into a legal department and do that same kind of advisory role. Susan, it's been a pleasure being able to um, have you here in Australia. It's been a wonderful partnership. 
for the centre with uh, Law Vision as well. Uh, thank you so much for your time and uh, we look forward to seeing you back in Australia in the very near future. Me too. My pleasure.